Stella is my name. I'm 35. Nora, who has recently turned six, is a sweet and adorable daughter. Cole, who often dislikes family trips, had suggested trekking the day before. Cole my age is bossy and doesn't listen to others, which has always bothered me. I wasn't looking forward to the hike because my asthma has been acting up for the past three days. Clean air will treat your bothersome asthma. Cole made his decision without consulting with us. When did he start being so rude to me? When we first married, he was a wonderful man. Is this how an eight-year-old married couple ends up? We drove for around two hours to get to the mountain on the day of the hike. Nora leaps for joy at her arrival. Wow, I found them for you, mom. She presents me with the acorns and pine cones she has collected. I told you it was going to be good. Let us really appreciate nature. Yes, I'm delighted Nora likes it. Although Cole generally sleeps all day on his days off, he seems unusually enthusiastic today, but I was relieved that we could finally enjoy a normal family day together. Let's dig a little deeper. The view is said to be spectacular. I'm fatigued after roughly 30 minutes of walking. Could we please slow down a little? We will leave you behind if you do not keep up. Mom, hurry up. Please hurry. They're becoming further and further apart. I'm running low on energy, and my throat begins to make strange noises as a cough comes in. Asthma would be disastrous in this environment. Nora is safe because she is with Cole. I should take things at my own pace. After another 30 minutes I see Cole but no trace of Nora. What happened to Nora? Wasn't she with you? She was, but she wanted to go further and rushed away. You let her go by herself. She's far too active for me to keep up with. Go find her if you're worried. She took that route. Cole's direction is densely forested, and the path is obscured. I need to find her as soon as possible. This is hazardous. Where are you, Nora? Please respond. Nora. I start shouting out for her, but I can't find her and get no response. I return to Cole's location around 20 minutes later, only to discover him speaking with a young woman in her 20s. What happened to Nora? This lady just mentioned seeing a little girl coming towards the parking lot. I guess I'll join them. No, you should continue your search in the woods. Cole and the woman make their way down the mountain to the parking lot. I go back in the direction Nora went. It's unusually silent, and to be honest, I don't see anyone around. Except for that woman, I haven't seen anyone since we arrived. What if I can't locate her? Please respond, Nora. I keep calling Nora's name, but the woods only seem to swallow it up. Cole isn't answering his phone, and my cell phone isn't working. I return to the parking lot, not knowing what else to do, and find Cole conversing with the woman. They're both smiling, therefore, I'm guessing Nora was discovered. What happened to Nora? She wasn't present. What? Why are you so at ease? I couldn't keep my annoyance at bay. Despite the fact that Nora was still missing, Cole was having a pleasant conversation with the young lady. What? I'm not sure why you're upset. Are you concerned about Nora? Let's take another look. Enough. It is your fault that she has died. Go find her on your own. I'm heading home. Cole then jumped into his car and drove away. You can't be serious, can you? I attempted to pursue the car, but it was too late. He's already gone out of view. Cole does not respond when I call him. He honestly abandoned us here. Before I knew it, the young woman had vanished and not a single car remained. What do I do now? The sun is lowering, and it will soon be dark. I return to the woods thinking of how afraid Nora must be. But after an hour of searching, I still don't hear anything. The wheezing in the back of my throat is also getting worse. I'm having trouble breathing. It's meaningless to gaze alone. Finally, it occurs to me that I should contact the police. But I'm not getting a signal. I finally reached the police after a desperate search for a signal. Only to find that Nora had been recovered safely by a bystander. I call a taxi to take me to her. Nora runs to me crying as soon as she sees me. Mom, thank God, you're all right. Are you in pain? No, Mom, I was terrified. I'm very sorry, Nora. I'm not sure if it's the relief, but I can't stop coughing. Nora gently massages my back. Mom, are you all right? Don't worry, we'll rush to the hospital. I thank the cop, and we proceed to a local hospital for my asthma treatment. Fortunately, it's not severe and I began to feel better after using the inhaler. Nora then drops a surprise. Mom, one of Dad's friends, told me about a magnificent flower garden. I was with her, and then all of a sudden I was alone. What, you didn't go for a walk in the woods? No way would I do that. Do you remember how this woman and her father looked? Nora took out her toy camera and showed me a photo she had taken. It was a picture of a young woman Cole had met earlier and they were snuggling up, definitely more than just buddies. Could he be lying? I felt disoriented from the shock and crouched down right there. Mom, are you all right? Are you still coughing? I'm perfectly fine. When I saw Nora's troubled expression, I understood I couldn't give in now. He's not going to get away with this. I'm going to have to dig deep. To keep Cole from finding out where I was, I turned off my phone's location and opted to spend the day at my brother's neighboring apartment. 
Cole was unaware that our house was visible from there because my brother Jason had recently moved in. Cole's car, however, was not at home, and the house was dark and quiet. Where could he possibly be? I took out my phone and dialed Cole's number. What do you desire? How could you abandon us? Because you're vexing. So did you manage to track down Nora? She is, indeed, safe. And because my asthma has worsened, I'll be in the hospital for roughly a week. Nora will be staying with my folks. Really? You almost seem pleased about it. I'm relieved that Nora is safe. Take precautions. My skepticism of Cole, who was not only unapologetic, but also outright lying, grew. He didn't even inquire as to which hospital I was at. He's most likely with her right now, plotting something terrible. I was filled with wrath. But I had to wait until I could see for myself. Finally, Cole arrived home late at night and left for work the next morning at his usual time. Meanwhile, I purchased a small security camera and installed it indoors. I was able to view its footage, including audio, on my phone. Cole was now under my monitoring. The woman I saw in the mountains came into our house that night, and they began eating dinner in the living room while drinking wine. I became nauseated watching them get touchy-feely. It was a wise decision to take advantage of my wife's illness and transport her to the mountain. This week in the hospital will be bliss for her. You're a genius, boss, right? Without any interruptions, we can now relax. It's not easy being together at work, but you always say the thrill makes it all worthwhile. True, his affair partner appears to be a subordinate at his company. They appear to be doing something questionable at work as well. This is unbelievable. It's completely unforgivable. They were laughing and hugging each other happily. This is my opportunity to capture them in the act. I silently left my brother's house, entered mine, and approached the living room, confirming they were there in the center of it all. I began recording on my phone. Then I made a loud noise and opened the door. We're certainly lively. What brings you here? You're meant to be in the hospital. They couldn't even split since they were caught off guard. Help. Please assist. Seeing the two of them in pain has moved me beyond shock to pity. Please get an ambulance. A mod has gathered outside our house while sirens have wailed. Neighbors are taking note because Cole and the woman were screaming so loudly. The two of them are carried into the ambulance wearing only bedsheets. I accompany him to the hospital as his wife. Cole and his mistress are then released not long after arriving and receiving medical attention. The doctor released them, so the two of them are shivering on a hospital bench, wrapped only in sheets because they lack clothing. This is simply pitiful. When did you leave the hospital? In the first place, I was never admitted. I've been watching you, you know. What? How? From my brother's new place? It has a direct view of our home. Huh? I groaned and handed them the hospital pajamas that I had taken from the nurse's station. I couldn't stand watching their humiliation any longer. They hurriedly changed into their jammies. So how long has this been happening? You did everything wrong. She had just dropped off some work paperwork. Oh, you're serious? I tell Cole what Nora told me and show him the photo she shot. This is the case. Didn't you leave Nora alone in the mountains just to get close with her? That is not correct. When I realized what had happened, she was gone. Cole attempts to act stupid. Cole and the woman are plainly shaken when I recreate the exchange I overheard between them in the living room. Will you continue to deny it? So there you have it. I can't believe you waited until I was gone to meet her. What's the matter with you? Take a look at who's chatting. You are the one who is snooping on me. Can you really say that after abandoning our sick child and me in the mountains? I could feel my feelings for Cole fading as I witnessed his lack of sorrow. I'll never forgive you for endangering Nora. Let us get divorced. Divorce? Why? How can you even ask such a question? If you're so compatible with her, simply go be with her. I scowl at the woman next to me, and she glares back. She tries to connect her arm to Cole's. Cole, on the other hand, brushes off her arm and clutches my hand. I was just having fun with her. I had no intention of destroying our family, and to be honest, it was terrible and awful. So I'm calling it quits with her. What? The woman's face contorts like that of a demon. Cole gets slapped across the face. Are you serious? What exactly are you saying? Enough. I'm sick of women who are only a few years my junior. That is inhumane. You stated that you would marry me after your divorce. I'm disgusted as I see their argument play out. The woman who knew he was married and Cole, who would almost certainly repeat this behavior, are both to blame. Remove it. Keep it low. This is a hospital. Both finally quieted down in response to my reprimand. They both appear to be in desperate need of reflection. You'd better get ready. I'm going to the police because you abandoned me and our small daughter in the mountains while I was sick. What? Is that illegal? Yes, of course. Please, please, please give me a break. Forget about the cops. Both abruptly backtracked, seeming remorseful. Although they apologize, I'm sure their hearts aren't in it. That isn't everything. I want the house sold for property division and $30, thousand in infidelity compensation. Don't forget about Nora's child support. Please accept my apologies. 
I apologize, and you, who touched coal, owe me thirty dollars, thousand in damages as well. That is something we cannot afford, it's not my problem, you'll have to borrow money. Oh gosh, if there's one thing you've learned, it's to avoid men with families. Got it, please reconsider. Cole abruptly bows to the floor in apology, and the woman quickly follows. What is there to reconsider now? I regard both of them with contempt. No way, I'll also notify your company about this. Goodbye. This is the absolute worst. I left Cole and his affair partner yelling and went to the police station to file a report. They were both arrested soon after for abandonment charges involving me and my daughter Nora. According to my lawyer it will be a serious offense for them. As a result, Cole and his mistress both lost their jobs. I successfully completed the divorce proceedings which included securing the affair settlement and child support in a single lump sum, utilizing the proceeds from the sale of our house. I also managed to reach a settlement with the other woman, funded from her severance package. As I contemplated moving out of the apartment, my friend Jason, who had been incredibly supportive throughout the process, expressed his concern for my well-being and that of my daughter Nora. He kindly suggested, why don't you come stay with me? Gratefully accepting his generous offer, I now find immense happiness in each day spent with my cherished daughter and beloved brother. Perhaps due to the reduced stress in my life, I've noticed a significant improvement in my health, with my asthma attacks having ceased, and I'm feeling fantastic.